Hi friends, this is part two of lesson six. So what I'm going to do is I kind of cut part of 266 out so we could see it. Um, just so you know which three ways there are to get a common denominator. So I'm going to redo, I'm going to do some of these over here so that you can see them. Um, but the, a lot of this is just getting practiced and, and looking at numbers and knowing your multiplication facts is like the number one big thing that you got to have solid for you to feel pretty good about this. So if I'm doing number 16, I have three sixths and five tenths. Well, hmm, what number can I get to 10? I can't get six to 10. I can't get six to 20, 10 times two. I can't get six to 30, I can. Yes, I can, times five times three times five times three. I have 15 thirtieths and I have, oh, look at that, 15 thirtieths. So three sixths is equal to five tenths. I'm trying to model my thinking out loud so that you can hear some of the things that I'm thinking inside of my head. Maybe you don't want to know all of them. It can be a little scary place up there sometimes. But seven, eight, ten twelfths and seven eighths. I'm thinking of a number that they both can get to. Let's see. Tw I can't get eight to twelve. Hmm. What's twelve times two? Twelve times two is twenty-four. Oh wait a second. I know that eight times three is twenty-four. Whatever I do to the bottom. I hear you, do it to the top, times two. So 10 twelfths, now I'm looking at this fraction and this fraction, because now my denominators are the same. I can look at the numerators and 7 eighths is greater than 10 twelfths. Number 18 is two sixths and one fifth. Now, this is one of those ones that it's, it's really scenario number, case number three. For 16 and 17, we did, I'm sorry, I just made, said the wrong thing. 16 and 17, we did case number three. For number 18, we're looking at case number two. The only number that is a factor of both of these denominators is one. So we're going to say, we're going to multiply it by the other one, by each other. So you have 10 thirtieths and 6 thirtieths. So now I'm looking at this fraction, and I'm looking at this fraction, and 2 sixths is greater than 1 fifth. Number 19 is 3 eighths. and one-fourth. And I already know that I'm going to use case number one to figure this one out because I know that I could get four to eight. So I'm going to keep three eighths, three eighths. I'm going to multiply the top and the bottom by two and get three eighths. Oh, except for if I was multiplying correctly. I know you're all screaming at me right now. Miss Oscar, sorry. Two eighths. So three eighths is greater than one fourth. Number 20. Ooh, this is a big one. Three tenths and 25 one hundredths. Well, I know, because I know my multiplication facts pretty, pretty good, pretty well that I can get this 10 to 100. So I'm going to leave hundredths alone, and I'm going to multiply both top and bottom by 10, and I'm going to get 30 one hundredths. So now I can compare these two fractions, and that tells me that 3 tenths is greater than 25 one hundredths. 
Okay, I'm going to do one more, and then I'm going to have you try to do the six on here by yourself. Um, see how you do. I want to do number 27, actually, because it's one of the harder ones. 11 twelfths. So I'm doing this last one. 11 twelfths and 9 tenths. Hmm. What can I do? What can I do? What can I do? All right. Well, I can't get 10 to 12. So I'm going to start thinking of all the multiplication, all my 12s. So 12 times 2 is 24. I can't make 10 go to 24. 10, 12 times 3 is 36. I can't get 12. 36, 10, 10, 10 to 36. 12 times 4 is 48. Can't get 10 to 48. 12 times 5 is 60. Hey, can I get 10 to 60? I can. So if I do 12 times 5 and 10 times 6, I have 55 sixtieths and 54 sixtieths. Ooh, those are close ones. So 11 twelfths is greater than 9 tenths. So I'd like you to try number 21 through 26 on your own. If you're having a hard time or you're not sure, circle it. We'll talk about it in workshop tomorrow. But I've done six examples here that should give you a nudge in the right direction. So go ahead and pause the movie here, try those, and then we're going to move on to page 268. Okay. So these are word problems, but don't let that scare you. You're doing exactly the same thing. Alexi and Christy are painting a fence around her garden. Alexi has painted three-eighths of the fence. So here's Alexi. Okay. Then Christy has painted five-twelfths of the fence. Who has painted more of the fence? So we have to compare these two fractions. Well, again, we have 8 and 12. And I seem to remember that 24 is a number that these two have in common. So I'm going to go to 24. 24 10 24 So the question is, who painted more of the fence? Christy. That girl was a painting machine. Let's look at number 29. Esther and Lavinia, 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 have the same math homework. Esther has finished, <laughs> Esther has finished seven-eighths of her homework. Lavinia has finished three-fifths of her homework. I'm going to shorten. Who has finished more homework? So I have to compare. Eight and five are the, is that one where they really don't share anything. So we're going to multiply by each other. I'm going to take the five. I'm going to take the eight. Get a common denominator of 40ths. Who has more? Who has finished more homework? Hmm, our friend Esther with seven eighths. Abram and Anton. We have Abram and Anton. Abram's house is three fourths miles from school. Um, Anton's house is seven tenths from the school. Which boy's house is greater distance from the school? Well, looking at four and ten, um, I know that I can get to twenty with both of these. Oops, times five, so I have fifteen. 20th. And that's boys and girls knowing that I can look at them and say, ooh, 20. I know my multiplication facts really well. So if you need to look at a multiplication table to see those, to see those um, comparisons quicker, use it. It's a tool. I'm okay with that. Um, 
Because the overall thing here is I'm not trying to have you know your multiplication facts. I'm here to see if you know how to compare fractions with unlike denominators. So 15 20ths is what Avram's distance and 14 20ths is Anton's. So Avram is further away. I'm going to have you try to do 31 on your own. It's a hard one. So um, I want to, I'm challenging you to try 31 on your own. So don't ask your parents for help. Do your best and then show me what you did and we'll talk about it in a workshop tomorrow. Now these adding ones down here, you're going to be following the same line of thought. You need to have a common denominator before you can add them. Two tenths plus three one hundredths. I can't just add straight across. I don't have a common denominator. You're not adding the same types of fractions. So in other words, you're doing the same thing where you're going to multiply the bottom and the top and get another fraction. So 20 hundredths plus 3 hundredths equals 23 hundredths. Okay, so 17 hundredths plus 7 tenths equals, well, I don't have a common denominator, so times 10 times 10 is 70 plus 17 is 87 hundredths. Nine tenths plus thirty three one hundredths times ten times ten is ninety one hundredths, which equals one twenty three over one hundred. But what is what is wrong with that fraction? It's a little improper. So how many one hundreds fit into one twenty three? One with twenty three one hundredths remaining. This will get easier the more we do it. It will also be easier the better you know your multiplication facts. So if you've got it, great. We will have a few more to practice on in our small group tomorrow. If you've tried really hard, you've at attempted it, if you're not sure about it, circle it and we can have a conversation about it in class tomorrow. Um, don't get discouraged. Remember, every moment is a learning moment, and I'll see you tomorrow.